Welcome to Thoughts in the Market. I'm Andrew Sheets, Chief Cross Asset Strategist for Morgan Stanley. Along with my colleagues bringing you a variety of perspectives, I'll be talking about trends across the global investment landscape and how we put those ideas together. It's Friday, September 10th at 2 p.m. in London. We recently downgraded U.S. equities to underweight, a shift that brings our global equity view down to neutral. I wanted to talk about why we made this change, what we're watching, and what it might mean for investors. The why for this change is simple. We see poor risk-adjusted returns for U.S. equities relative to other asset classes. My colleague Michael Wilson, Morgan Stanley's chief investment officer and chief U.S. equity strategist, forecasts that the U.S. market will decline about 5% through the middle of next year. Another method of estimating return based on market valuation and the state of the economy is a little more optimistic, but not by much. Taken together, they suggest that U.S. equities now offer the lowest return of any major stock market that we cover. These cautious estimates are being driven by several factors. Valuation in U.S. stocks are high and, importantly, haven't moderated like many other markets around the world. Estimates for corporate profitability look pretty optimistic, especially as Morgan Stanley's chief U.S. economist, Ellen Zentner, expects U.S. growth to slow sharply in the third quarter. September and October also bring a cavalcade of events that could put U.S. stocks between a rock and a hard place, so to speak. There's a realistic scenario where U.S. COVID cases peak, economic data recovers, and U.S. infrastructure spending passes, a set of events that could push bond yields higher. But it's also plausible that school reopenings get more complicated, data weakness lingers, and legislative progress gets bogged down, factors that could lead to more pessimism on the economy and corporate profitability. The Federal Reserve, meanwhile, is meeting on September 22nd and will, in our expectation, confirm plans to start slowing the pace of their bond purchases. U.S. equities are particularly exposed to these events. Many of these storylines are pretty U.S.-centric. U.S. stock valuations imply more optimism than other markets. And U.S. equities, especially large-cap growth stocks, behave with much higher interest rate sensitivity than other markets around the world. If interest rates go up, it's more of a problem. If U.S. equities are less attractive, what's preferable? That remains a dilemma. Indeed, we think it's the reason why many investors remain pretty heavily invested in the market, even if they acknowledge a lot of the risks I just discussed. Bonds don't yield much. Cash yields even less. What to do? Our best answer to this question is to try to run the numbers. Our estimates have stocks in Europe and Japan returning about 10% more than stocks in the U.S. between now and the middle of next year. Meanwhile, while cash yields next to nothing, that's still higher than the even lower returns my colleagues forecast for U.S. stocks, government bonds, or credit. We think September and October will be a tricky period for markets, especially U.S. equities. The good news? Many of these events should get resolved one way or another and hopefully provide a clear picture in the not-too-distant future. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to Thoughts in the Market on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen and leave us a review. We'd love to hear from you. The preceding content is informational only and based on information available when created. It is not an offer or a solicitation, nor is it tax or legal advice. It does not consider your financial circumstances and objectives and may not be suitable for you. 